Alright guys, so I want to talk about Venus flytrap care today. I've had these things in the past, quite often they come in kits. I had some when I was a kid and um, they never lived that long. I've always thought they were cool plants, but like I said, I haven't had them for years. I had them when I was a kid and they never lived that long and I figured out why. I wanted to get another one, so I've done a lot of research on them. And basically, the kits that I used to get and stuff and how I used to care for them was basically all wrong. Uh, first off, lots of the kits come with a dome and they're kind of keeping humidity. You don't want to do that. Uh, that'll pretty much cause them not to live very long. You don't want a dome. You need good lighting, which is something I didn't really realize as a kid. Of course, I put them in the window. And if you have a good enough sunlight window, you should be fine with them just in the window. Um, but what I, what I decided to do this time is I have a uh, good lamp here which is propped up. I might move these guys. I'm going to kind of just put the camera sideways so you can see. Really bright LED light there. You can also use compact fluorescent, but a regular incandescent light I wouldn't use. And uh, they're going to need light for at least 10 hours a day with this uh, artificial light. If you have them in a nice window and you got really bright sunlight, they should be fine without any additional light, but it's got to be really good strong light for a good long time. Also water. I used to just give these guys tap water you don't want to do that. You got to go to the store. It's these, they don't take too much water, but you have to go to the store and get either reverse osmosis or distilled water. You can find it in the store in the gallon jugs for about a dollar for a gallon. It really doesn't cost that much. And you need to give them that water. If you're giving them tap water, most likely they're not going to live very long. So you got to get that good water to give them. Also the substrate they're in. Best substrate form is either fibered sphagnum moss or peat moss, and you got to make sure it has no fertilizers or anything in it. It's got to be just completely natural. Have some here, and um, you want to basically fill up the pot, have the roots down in there, and fill up the pot so you can't see any roots of the plant. You only want to see red or green coming out of the uh, peat moss there. You don't want to um, see any roots. So you want to get the roots completely covered, but you don't want to get them too, too deep. You just want to get all the roots covered, and as you can see, you can see the red and the green coming out, but you can't see any white or yellow roots. So you want those completely under there, and uh, just the green plant coming out. You want the plant to be in a pot that has slits on the side because you're going to want to put the pot into another container that has water in it. You probably can't tell but I'm going to move it. It has water in it and uh, that's going to keep that moist. You want it about one-third up the pot. I can add a little bit more to mine. So you want that water about one-third up the in inside pot and that's going to continually keep it moist. These things that I was talking about as a kid where they used to have like a uh, cover over the plant to keep it humid in there that kind of provides the same idea, always keep it moist, but that doesn't work. These guys don't like to be super humid. They like to have a moist substrate though. So basically that's about it for how to care for them, but then there's feeding. Um, feeding, basically I also did wrong as a kid because I was always messing with the plant. I was always, you know, trying to get it to eat bugs and that probably just stressed it out anyways and caused it to die as well. These plants only need about one insect a week. Uh, if you have them inside, you can feed them any type of insect basically. I'll get some feeding videos in the future but I just planted this guy today. It should wait at least three or four days <coughs> after planting to feed them because they, they still got to make their roots and get ready and fully open up too as you can see. This is how they came to me. They still have to uh, fully open up. So basically they should eat about one insect per week uh, per plant. I actually have two plants in here, two different uh, there's a lot of tops, but it's two different plants spread out. So I actually have two plants in here so I could feed two insects a week. When I was a kid, I used to try, you know, as often as I could. And all the tops would always be closed. Sometimes they'd get insects, sometimes they wouldn't. So I was trying to feed them too much back then as well. So pretty much I wanted to talk about it. Like I said, these are pretty common. You can get kits for them all over the place. I'd say go online and try to find reviews and buy it from somewhere that has good plants that are, that are of a pretty good size. This was about $12 for two plants, and it's pretty good size for that cost, and uh, we'll see how long it lives. It looks healthy. Um, you know, I just got it today, and it looks healthy as it arrived, so we'll see how it does. 
So anyways guys, I'll get some uh, feeding videos in the future. If you have any questions about how to care for Venus flytraps, let me know. And otherwise, see you guys next time. Just going to give you guys some more close-ups before we end the video.